Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Basketball Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway, presented by and on the GSMC Podcast Network for all of your podcasting needs. Happy Friday. Um, I think this might be our first Friday of the year. No? Second? Fine. Second one. Hopefully your Fridays are going well. If you're not having another good, if you're not having a good Friday, don't worry. You still got like 50 more to go. You know, so there's that. There's that thing happening. Today. Um, we're going to talk about the Cavs' struggles and why it's not a problem. Uh, they got blown out by 34 points last night to Toronto, and it's not a problem. Don't worry about it. I'm going to tell you why it's not a problem. I'm going to tell you why everyone um, should settle down. I'm going to tell you guys about Lou Williams having 50 points and why and why it's not just about Lou Williams. Lou Williams is an, is an outstanding player. He's outstanding. However, I'm going to tell you why Lou Williams having 50 points is going to tell you why the Clippers are garbage and why they've been garbage forever. You know what? Not even garbage. I'm just going to say that things that happen within the organization probably don't happen um, to the best level of potentiality, whatever that means. I'm going to explain to you why his 50 points tells you why the Clippers staff record label and crew needs to reevaluate their decisions. I'm also going to talk to you about Kevin Durant having 20,000 points. And before I want to, I want to do something that we haven't done a lot. I want to appreciate his 20,000. Before we start counting it and measuring it and comparing it to other stuff, I just want to appreciate the 20,000 points that he scored. Is that okay? Can we can we do that? Is that all right? I hope you guys are okay with me like basically appreciating it because what the hype is, um the hype what we run with is how fast he did it, who else has done it? How where will he get to? Is he better than Michael Jordan? Will he own the NBA? Is he the next David Stern? Calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. We're comparing, t- comparing Kevin Durant to Tom Brady, Lance Armstrong, Barry Bonds. No, 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 calm down, calm down. We're just going to appreciate the 20,000 points. That's what we're going to do. And then I'm going to give you guys something that happened in NBA history. Um, I have actually two of them for you because I felt like I felt like the what I found was great because this is what happened. This is what happened, right? At the end of the show, in case you're new here, I give you this day in NBA history. So that when you talk to your friends, you can say, hey, did you know that this happened this long ago? Or just so you even know that it happens, because, I mean, it's helpful to know. But check this out. When I looked up the 12th, I couldn't find the 12th. Like, I found the 12th, but the things that happened on the 12th, on January 12th, they just, they weren't really, they weren't that outstanding to me. And I, I don't, I wanted to find, I like finding things for you guys that sound or that are a little odd or like ostentatious where it's like, I can't believe that occurred. Or it's like, oh, wow, that happened. Something interesting. But the 12th had nothing. I looked at the 13th and the 13th had so many things that I chose to. So look forward to that. It's coming somewhere towards the end. That's what we have. However, before I get in all that, I want to ask you guys a question. Do you notice, I guess, I feel like this has happened a lot after Christmas, and I believe that this is how I didn't know this is how this is happening. Okay, but I found out it's a Christmas thing. And what I learned, you know how when you're on when you're on the Internet and then you're like looking at stuff and it pops up in your email later. Right. Like, oh, my God, you want to buy this or whatever? You didn't give them your email address or anything like that at all. But it'd be like on your browser page for like a week or so. Right. Check this out. I haven't browsed the internet or browsed Google or anything like that for shopping in weeks because, you know, like 
I did all my Christmas shopping. I don't know. I was done by maybe the 10th, I believe. So it's been a month. Did some Black Friday shopping, just browsing around the computer or what have you. And so I haven't like looked at anything in a month. And I, I'm one I'm one of the people that clear my browser history. So when I go back to my computer, I gotta I have to log into everything all the time because I don't I don't like just having a whole bunch of stuff just cached in there. I know the computer knows everything that I'm doing. I'm just saying I like to have a little bit of control over my life, just a little bit. But I'm starting to get weirded out about how the internet knows everything that I want. And I was like, how was this even possible? I didn't even, I haven't clicked on this. I don't even know what this is, but it's because of Christmas and because of Christmas and browsing on things. Like, why are you advertising? Why are you showing me purses? Oh, I look at a purse for somebody like a month ago, but like still though, like here's the thing, Google, like if I didn't buy it a month ago and I haven't browsed it in a month, maybe it wasn't for me. Maybe I don't want it, Google. So I appreciate your proactivity in like showing me things that, that I was at one point interested in, but I'm not interested in them any, in them anymore. Like, why are you showing me fish tanks? I'm not, I haven't looked. I wanted to buy a fish bowl to put like change in because I thought, I thought that like putting change in a fish bowl would be kind of cool. Like it would look like better than like an Alhambra bottle. I don't know. This is not a good look. Don't you guys think like have a fish bowl with change in it? Oh, it seemed, it just seemed like it'd be cool to me. But I haven't looked at that in a month, but Google's still like, Hey, do you want this fish bowl? And all of my email, Hey, we got these good fish bowl prices. I don't want a fish bowl anymore. I don't mind you guys being all inside of my brain. Cause that's just what you do. That's your goal to dig all inside my mind and get in my deep inner thoughts and then send them to the CIA. And then when I blow up, you guys have these tops, you guys have all these pictures of me like doing stuff and thinking about weird things. Which fine, I've accepted that that's going to happen. That's okay. Because when you blow up, things like that have to happen. And I've accepted that as a staff record label in the crew as Ryan Holloway. However, I don't need you sending me stuff I don't want anymore. Stop it. Stop it. I need you to, I need you to be more proactive with your distribution of my private information. Don't be raggedy about it. So, Cavs. Cavs lose to the Raptors by 34 points. And, like, this is where we're at right now. Interestingly enough, like prior prior to this game, LeBron gave a gave a pretty introspective review. Um, not review. Yeah, sure. Introspective review of like his career and where he's at right now and how he feels about it. Because what ends up happening is that like around this time, not even around this time, I'm not gonna say around this time, but off and on during the Cavaliers um season, if you will, they have they have like these up and downs. And whenever they have up and downs, like it's a story. It's like what's what's happening? What what is what is going on? If if the Cavs are losing games, like what's happening? And I I mean I understand I understand the cause for concern because on one end, like we spend an immense amount of time comparing LeBron to Michael Jordan, and he's a great he's one of the greatest players like to ever play basketball ever. So when we we wonder like what what's happening? I can't believe this is going on. How are they losing? Me? How are they losing so many games in a row? Because last night, before they lost to the Raptors, they lost six of their last nine games. Since losing to the Raptors last night, now they've lost seven of their last ten. So of their last ten games, they've lost 70% of their games. Is that a big deal? It's not a big deal. I'm going to tell you guys why it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal because, can you guess? Can you guess? I'm going to let you guess because I feel like a lot of you guys that listen to my show, I, I think you're kind of intelligent. And I feel like if you really wanted to, you can guess. And if you can't, that's fine. It's not a big deal. Because the Cavs are in third place. They're 26 and 15. They lost to the Raptors. It, it's fine. It, it's not a big deal. And because they're not a team that's going to sneak out of the playoffs. I had a good, I had a conversation with a good friend about this. He, he asked me how he, he, he asked me why does he said, he said he loves James Harden, but doesn't appreciate James Harden a lot because when James Harden's like not in the game, when the shots aren't falling, he quits on the team. And, he said that he compared it to like the playoffs last year when James Harden was um, when the Rockets were getting stomped on by the Spurs. And he said that James Harden quit. And a lot of people said that James Harden quit now. But when James Harden is, is playing his absolute best out of his mind, people will talk about how prolific of a scorer he is. Prolific is a word they just throw around because they they've said that a lot with Carmelo Anthony as well, and I think he's averaging like 20 right now. I don't mean that kind of prolific. I mean unstoppable prolific, like James Harden level. But if you check James Harden's stats and records and so on and so forth and all that, he's missed one game. Prior to this like hamstring thing, 
He's missed one game since the 2014-2015 season. And he didn't get MVP last year only because he didn't average a triple-double, but he had the most assists in the league total. He also averaged the most points in the league. Now, you get burnt out. Like that's when you play your absolute best all the time, like you get burnt out. And I, I know, I know there's going to be some old hits like Michael Jordan never got burnt out. I don't want to be disrespectful to my elders, but, um, I'm not going to say shut up, but I'm just going to say before you say a bunch of stuff that isn't before you just say something that you think I can't Google, you Google it and then get back to me and let me know if Michael Jordan played every single minute of every single game because he didn't. And sometimes he got tired. Sometimes Michael Jordan got tired. I hate I hate to tell you guys this. I hate to tell you that Michael Jordan was a human, but sometimes he got tired. And my point about talking about James Harden is this. We love to celebrate the idea that LeBron goes to the finals every year. I, does anyone know when the last time he didn't go? Can anyone tell me? I I don't even I can't I I can't tell you. The, can anyone tell me the last team that went that wasn't that wasn't a team that LeBron was on? Was it the Celtics that went and played against Kobe? Was it them? I think I think it might have been them. I think, yeah, yeah, that, that's who it was. The Celtics went and they played the Lakers because we really, we desperately wanted to see, we desperately wanted to see LeBron play Kobe. We really wanted to see that. The Celtics beat the Cavs. The Celtics went on to either beat the Lakers or lose the Lakers. I want to say they lost the Lakers that time. After that, LeBron went to Miami. They went to the finals and they lost to the Mavs. They lost the Mavs. Since then, LeBron has been back to the finals every single year. And this was in 2011. So he's been in the finals every year since 2011. And you wonder why they lose games sometimes? It's because he's tired. He's tired. Like, can you you imagine? And I think, you know, the interesting thing is, I think it's like this. With With football teams... With football teams, they play these 16 games, and then like you're, then you're going to get a bye if you're the best team, and then you're going to play three games. You play first round, second round, first round, second round, conference finals, and then Super Bowl, right? So you're going to do that, and you get you get like a break, a two-week break in between. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying football's not hard. Not at all. I would never say that. I would never be disrespectful. What I'm saying, though, is to go to the finals – you have to, there's no buy, which it'd be, it'd be awesome if there was a buy in basketball, like, cause it's so many games to play. Like you're the first seed, you gotta play this eighth seed, you have to dog them. You have to, they may take you to seven games just to be jerks about it. Like, hey, we know we're not gonna win anything, but we're gonna hurt all your players and just, and just make things terrible for you. And you have to beat all these teams, all of them. You have to put four games down in everybody's face. Then you have to go to the finals. Do you know how many games that is? It's 12 games. It's 12 games. They have to win the first round. Sec. Oh, wait, wait. That's not even. I'm sorry. You have to go to the. Yeah, you have to go to the first round, then the second round, then the conference finals. You got to go to the finals. So you have to win like 12 games first off the rip just to go to the finals. You go to the finals, and depending on if that team beats you four times, that's is that 16 games. I mean, and that and that's only and that's only if we're talking sweeps. That's only if we're talking sweeps. So. I'm going to do some math for you real quick. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to, I'm going to explain to you why right now LeBron is, I'm going to explain to you why right now LeBron's the best player ever, period. I'm going to tell you why you can tell all your friends, but I'm going to go to a commercial break. And when I get back, I'll tell you all about it, but don't go anywhere because I'm going to tell you. And then you're going to be upset about it. But geez, Ryan Holloway really knows what he's talking about. Be right back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info.
Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway, presented on and by your favorite podcast network, the GSMC Podcast Network, to fulfill all of your podcasting needs. As promised, I told you guys I was going to tell you why LeBron is the best player ever as of right now. This is why. I don't feel 33. I don't feel like I've been to seven straight finals in a row. I don't feel like I came in at 18 and I've played 79 to 80% of my games. Just keep it going. I've already went further than I thought I would go. Everything after this point is extra credit. 15 years, I don't know. I've been in the spotlight half of my years. I'm 33 now. This thing started when I was 15, 18 years. I've been in this light right here. I've already exceeded everything I've dreamed about. Now, like, the reason that makes him the best ever is because of this. I'm going to tell you exactly why. Now, some people are going to hear this quote, and then they're going to say, oh, he's quitting, or he's already given up, or he's he's trying to hedge his bets by saying it doesn't matter if he wins or loses. No, no. He's not saying it doesn't matter if he wins or loses. He's saying he's already content. Now, if you say that you're content, and you still play at that level, then... I think that makes you the best ever because some people talk about how hungry they are and like that. I feel like people outside of sports, they see other people struggle in sports and it defines a narrative. Like you don't want things, you don't want things in, you don't want things in your life to be like more difficult than they can possibly be. Just so someone else watching can say, Oh, oh he got through it all. No, 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 no. That's not what you want. But in sports, we want that. So in sports, we want someone to say, oh, fight for this. I would die for this game tomorrow. No, 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 no. Especially with the accolades he's reached. So the reason I say LeBron is the greatest is because he has this much determination and drive. He's balling this hard and he's content. He's already fulfilled. And that's a, that. To, if you feel like that's a subjective meaning to the greatest ever, that's fine. That's 100% okay. It's my opinion. I'm just saying that a lot of these players drive themselves crazy over the opinions of others and the talking heads. And um, I don't mean to just talk about myself, but I'm going to say that he's not that concerned about my opinion, but he's still playing in, at an incredibly high level. LeBron said, the only thing is with my kids getting older, that's the only thing that kind of stops me from going as long as I'd like to. So he'd love to play, but he'd love to, he would stop playing because his kids are getting older. He can spend more time with them. And at the same time, he likes playing ball because he did say, quote, that he has more, he has more sneakers to sell. Ha 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 ha. So that might mean that he may have like a Derrick Rose type of contract where we're going to give you this $1 billion. But we need you to play this long. And I really, I could see him signing a contract like that just because uh, if, if Adidas put that in with Derrick Rose, I don't see why Nike would just give him a billion dollars and then say, Hey, this is, um, Hey, we're going to give you a billion and basically you can just quit whenever. No, no, no. I'm pretty sure they were like, Hey, LeBron, we need you to score the most points ever. And LeBron is about 8,000 points away from scoring the most ever. He has 30,000 and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has 8,000 points. So Nike might have, Nike might have put in a bonus. This is complete speculation, but I think, I think this is just fun to talk about. What if they told LeBron, listen, we'll give you seven, we're going to give you a $700 million contract. No, we're going to give you $500 million contract. Just period. You could quit whenever you want. Um, just play two more years. You have quit whenever you want though. Play two more years. But if you score the most points ever, we'll give you another 500 million. So that's a billion. Like, really? So all I got to do is score 8,000 more points? And that's why he's balling. That's why. That's why he's balling. Because solely based on his whole staff, record label, and crew of a team, the whole Motley crew that he throws together every every year, basically, he, I believe he can still play and put up 29 every single game. And with this, I don't want, I don't want people to think that just because LeBron said, you know, like I've done everything I could possibly do, that's not him quitting. And I, I hear that. I hear when I, I, I just want to reiterate that I hear athletes say this, and then the response is that that I don't know that like they're ungrateful or or they're spoiled or they should be they should take they should feel honored to do what they do. They do. That's why they're grateful. 
like I, Aaron Rod, Aaron Rodgers said something similar to this. He said he's been at the top, he's been at the bottom, and foot and there's more than football. And when he said that, people destroyed him. Like they destroy intrinsic players when they say like there's more to this game because there is more to the game. Turns out in life. When you're when you're awesome at something, when you're the best in the world, you also have other interests outside of that. It, it happens like we have other enthusiasms because if people didn't have other enthusiasms, then they would just do whatever they did forever. Like Floyd Mayweather would be boxing right now. He'd be boxing pay-per-view every year. But we have, we end up growing and enjoying other things. So it's fine. That it's fine to step away. I just feel like. For him to give this interview and then from the for them to get destroyed by the Toronto Raptors last night. I believe that this interview that he just did is going to be uh, it's good, the level of scrutiny that the level of scrutiny and the amount of combs they're going to run through this. Like, imagine this. This interview is just a whole bunch of hair. It's just a lot of hair in like a swimming pool. It just it just a pool full of a pool just full of hair and people. Everyone has a comb. 3,000 people come up with the comb and they it's an Olympic size swimming pool full of hair. Everyone gets a comb and they're just combing through it, combing through it. And that's what this that's what's going to happen with this interview, because I feel like it was going to be OK. And then they lost by they lost by 35 to the rock to the Raptors. And, you know, this is the, this is what gets me about it. Whenever whenever teams lose to what's the word, whenever teams lose to other teams, it's like, oh, my God, I can't believe you guys lost it. Like they lost to the Timberwolves the other day and people were flipping out. The Timberwolves are, are a good team. The Raptors are a good team. I don't understand why you guys would expect a good team to win all their games. They play 82 games for a reason. They play 82 games because at the end they shake out all the games and they find out what your record is. The thing is, if you play 82 games, there's going to be games that you should win. There's games that you shouldn't win. There's games that you might win by accident. There's games that you will lose by accident. But there's 82 games. If it was like, if everything was like one loss, like if everything, if you only played every team once instead of playing every team What's it? I think I believe you play teams and you play teams in the West Coast twice and play teams in the East Coast four times. I believe you played every team one time. The records would be the records would be wildly different, wildly. But instead, they play 82 games to shake it out. They always do this stat. I talked about the Wizards recently about how they're they have a losing record against teams that are sub 500. I mean, when you deep when you dive deep into that, if they don't make the playoffs or if they end up if they don't make the playoffs or get bounced out in the first round, that might mean something. But all it means is that. All it means is, is based on the schedule, they play bad. They may play bad teams when they're coming off of better games because all the numbers are in context, right? So it's difficult to say, hey, well, they have only lose to losing teams. So that means that they're losers. No, no, they only beat. They only lose to losing teams. I mean, that means they're losers. Actually, it could just mean they just play down to their competition because there's like there's no point in playing down. There's no point in playing that hard because the competition is garbage so who knows that could be it but they play 82 games for a reason i did some math while you guys were gone while you guys were gone as though i didn't go to a commercial break that's me just blaming you that's like that's emotional abuse right now i'm just i'm just blaming you for me for my absence but we'll go into that a little bit later um i apologize <laughs> where was i at um oh i did some math for you guys a minute a minute ago and found out that let's say uh so let's say let's say they're playing 20 games in the playoffs to get to the finals. And I feel like I I believe that that's a low estimate because some of the games are seven game series. So but we're going to say that each one is five. We'll just say that just for just for argument purposes. First round, second round, conference, finals, and then finals. We'll say each one of those is five games, even though it's not. That's 20 games. So that's 82 games plus the 20. That's 102 games. And I know I, I know that LeBron has played a lot of game seven. So but we're going to we're going to average him playing. We're going to average him playing one hundred and two games. For the last for the last seven seasons. So his playoff season, he's his playoff season counts as practically an extra season. Technically, well, actually, it counts as two, because if if, if it was only 20 and they've been in the finals for the last seven times. In each at seven times twenty, that's stay with me now. Seven times twenty, that's going to be one hundred and forty, I believe. One hundred and forty divided by two is at seventy. That's seventy. So that's almost two seasons. That's almost two extra seasons in the seven years. And people are wondering why they have bad streaks because they're tired. Because they're tired, and sometimes at work, some sometimes at work you have mental lapses. When you have a mental lapse, sometimes things don't work out the same way they do. 
as long as a job gets done by the end of the day or by Friday, then you're fine. If you're doing great at your job the last seven years, there might be there might be some times at work. There might be one week out of the year where, you know, you might call in sick a couple times. You may be late. Something might not get turned in on time. But if you're still if if you're still if you've still received employee of the year three out of the seven times, I can't knock you. I really will not. I will not. I will not judge. I will not do any of the above. When I get back, I'm going to tell you guys about why Lou Williams scoring 50 just tells you how bad the Clippers have been like over the past 27 years. Do you like that? Do you like how I put that together? Because I'm going to come back with this and it's going to be fire and you're going to love it. Be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G- smcpodcast.com for more info Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway, on your favorite podcast network, GSMC Podcast Network, to fulfill all of your podcasting needs. So I told you guys when I got back, I was going to tell you about about Lou Williams scoring 50 points and why it tells you about how the um, why I feel like it's a great explanation of why the Clippers as a staff record label and crew aren't very good. But. I'll get to that in a second. What I want to talk about is this. I mentioned something last segment when I was talking about LeBron and his Nike deal because I don't know the details of LeBron's Nike deal. We just know that um, that during a Maverick Carter interview with GQ magazine, there may have been hints that it was a billion. We don't really know 100%, but I'm, I'm going to guess it's a billion. Now, my thing, what I was saying was that LeBron's like, LeBron's 8,000 points away from having the most points ever. Uh, he's about 8,000 points behind Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And I feel like it'd be great marketing, be incredible, incredible mar- marketing for Nike to be an in, be like an endorser or promoter of the player to score the most points ever. Because it just makes sense, right? Because Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, I think he wore Converse. So if, Le- if LeBron can score 8,000 more points, then, you know, it'd be great for everyone, for everyone, except for the LeBron haters. Cause they're not going to like that very much. They're going to say, well, well, it does, it, the points don't count because at one point he was on the heat. So however you guys do that. But so my thing was, well, maybe Nike's going to get my, maybe Nike was like, here's the thing. We're going to give you $500 million just because you're LeBron. Like just because you're LeBron and we love you and, and you're a good guy. And we like what you do. We're happy about we're happy about who you are. You took that you took that shirt that said coolest monkey in the jungle, and then you edited it and made it say coolest king in the jungle because you weren't very happy with the company that made this sweater. Because you know, if you guys haven't heard about that, Google it. But LeBron like did a cool thing on Instagram. It was nice. Mikey's like, yeah, here's five hundred million because we like you. Wear the shoes. Then they were like, yo, but if you score eight thousand more points and you retire. As the leading scorer in NBA history of all time, of all time, of all time, of all time, then we'll give you 500 more million dollars, which is going to lead to one billion dollars and lifetime and lifetime use of a jet like on that Roger Goodell hype. Like, and I want lifetime use of a jet during a contract negotiation. Roger Goodell said he wanted lifetime health care for his children and his whole family, and he wanted $50 million a year, and he wanted lifetime use of a jet. You know how lifetime use of a jet works? I'm going to tell you guys about this. Lifetime use of a jet works like this. Most people would say, hey, I want I want my own jet. <laughs> then they get their own jet. You know, that, you know what that means? 
You know, you know what uh, getting a jet means? It means you gotta, it means you gotta fuel it. It means you gotta get a pilot. You gotta, it means you gotta pay jet taxes. You gotta park it somewhere. And if when it gets old, you got an old jet. You know what lifetime use of a jet means? That means that you just have to, you're able to use a jet. That's basically like having lifetime unlimited Uber. Instead of asking for a car, you ask for lifetime use of Uber. That way you always have an Uber to get into no matter what. If you ask for a car, in several years, a car is going to be old. You got to pay for maintenance. So that's just contract negotiations one-on-one. If you guys ever need anything, make sure you make sure you can figure out whether or not you actually need the tangible item or just use of the tangible item. Know what I mean? See what I'm saying? See what I mean? A long time ago, a long time ago when they used to do this, they used to exploit recording artists for record deals. They would just give them a Cadillac. And they're like, hey, we got you this Cadillac. Kind of like when they used to give people chains. Here's this Cadillac. Take this caddy. They're like, oh my God, I got a Cadillac. This is so great. Next thing you know, Cadillac is breaking down. Engine doesn't work. Transmission bumper's falling off. Hey, I need a new car. Now we already gave you a car. When you negotiate something, just say, hey, I want use of a vehicle all day long. So anyway, back, anyway, 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 back, back to LeBron. Sorry, I went off on that tangent, guys. I'm trying to give you a little bit of game because me, myself, I feel like I'm a professional communicator. I love negotiations and persuasion and rhetoric. So anything I can do to help the people, I'm here to help the people back to LeBron. So when I was talking about this whole LeBron negotiation thing, it got me thinking, does anyone remember, like, I want to say several months ago give or take. Now this was a while ago. It's been, it might have been a year ago. So at one point, at one point LeVar Ball said that his children, well that that Lonzo was offered I don't know, a few million dollars for like a Nike deal. Maybe it was 10, who knows. I think I just I don't I don't think it was enough. I don't think it was enough for it was enough for all of us to be like word and then at the same time not enough because LaVar said he wants a billion because he wanted a package deal for all of his kids, right? Okay. So he said he wanted a package deal. He wants a billion dollars. And I understood that like kind of to an extent, like, okay, well, if you think they're going to, if you think they're going to be that good, then, I mean, maybe you can package a billion. I don't know what, I don't know what the Lonzo deal was going to be, but they want like an endorsement deal and they were just going to give them $10 million and like have them like wear the shoes. Similar to like, similar to like, I don't know, uh, Blake Griffin, like not have your own shoe, but just wear the shoes type of thing. Like here, take this, wear these shoes, we'll give you money. Right? So at the time, Everyone's kind of well. I think I'm. I'm not gonna say everyone. I'm gonna say it was mixed emotions. Some people are like, hey, "You should take that money because who knows if they're go- who knows if you're gonna be that good, right? Because if you have your own shoe and you're not that good, no one's gonna buy this shoe, right? But if you're on, if you're a Nike athlete and they give you your own shoes, then you actually might kind of be able to. If you're not so good, you can like be propped up by the illusion of you being really good because you're a Nike athlete. Because that that's what it does. That if you're wearing, if Nike, if people know that you're a Nike athlete, like, oh, well, Nike invested in them, so that must mean you might be kind of good. It's a true story, I promise. But get this though. So at the time, people are like, well, should they take the money? Should they not take the money? Okay, whatever. But looking back on it now, it's like, oh, they probably should have took the money. Because you want to know why? If as of right now, the big baller brand, ironically, this is ironic, the big baller brand is being investigated by the better business bureau so triple b versus triple b i'm not making this up because apparently people are ordering shoes and ordering products and they're not receiving them people are also um people are also being overcharged from the, by their bank accounts and one of the, they can't seem to contact them no one picks up the 1-800 number they're also receiving the wrong items in the wrong sizes and the, and the place where they make the hat set they owe the guy that makes the hat they owe him twenty five thousand dollars so I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure who's in charge of the operation. I don't know if like Lonzo, I don't know if Lonzo is supposed to pay for some of this or what's going on, but it seems like they probably should have just signed with Nike or Adidas or Reebok or Fila or Skechers someone. Cause right now it's not looking good. Also, can you imagine like, I'm for, I'm sure like Nike's like, woo. That was a close one. Cause what if like what if Lonzo signed with Nike and and then like Lavar is in the stands like his shoes keep coming untied because of these Nikes. The tongue doesn't work. I don't like the grip. 
the air the air technology in the shoe isn't working correctly. Lonzo don't like those shoes. Then Nike would have to deal with that. Nike's probably so Nike is probably doing backflips right now. Pure backflips. Happy as happy. Do people say happy as a clam? Is that a thing? I don't even know what that means. I, sure, happy as a clam. I don't know why a clam would be very happy. Their lives don't seem very good. They live on the bottom of the ocean or they do they become are they related to barnacles? I don't know, but then someone puts them in soup and they get eaten. I'm gonna say happy as a clam. I'll Google it later and find out what it means for you guys. So yeah, I just I'm sorry. I thought about that because I was thinking about the billion dollars and how LeVar won a billion, but Le, I think I feel like LeBron has an incentive where he's gonna get a billion if he gets the most points. And that that makes that gives a good reason to watch LeBron just play because every time he gets a bucket, he's getting closer and closer to eight thousand more points. So there's that. Thank you for listening to that tangent. Speaking of buckets and points and just unlimited buckets and points, I want to tell you guys a little story. It's a story about Lou Williams. Well, it's about Lou Williams, but it's going to start with a different guy, someone that you've never, ever heard of before. Are you ready? Well, maybe you have heard of him. I don't know. We'll find out. Are you guys ready? Fine. So once upon a time, there was a guy named Charles Smith. Charles Smith was the third overall pick in the 1988 draft. In this draft, it also included... It also included Hall of Famers like Mitch Richmond, Steve Kerr, John Starks, those type of people. 1988 draft. The Clippers drafted him. He played He played pretty long. I believe he played about 10 years or so. Do you guys know what he did in 1990? You want to know what he did? He scored 50 points in 1990. 1990, he played for the Clippers and scored 50 points. This was a big deal then because people weren't just dropping 50. This wasn't something that was happening. No one was dropping 50 like that. Like I feel like Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan John Starks. Wilt Chamberlain a long time ago, Kareem, but 50 game, fifty point games weren't, weren't just happening all willy nilly like they use like they do now. It's not not really something that goes down. Now, here, here's the thing: Charles Smith was the last person to score fifty points until Lou Williams did it the night before last. Lou Williams scored fifty in 2017, and. I, I didn't I didn't know this. I know I know Lou Williams he will get you buckets. I'm completely aware of that. I respect him. He's a bucket getter. Lou Williams is Lou Williams is, is a is a Jamal Crawford, Monte Ellis, Allen Iverson. Like just come I, I so wish Allen Iverson would have kept playing and just and just became like some dude that would come off the bench and just give you buckets. I so wish that. He could have he got got six men of the year so many times. But sometimes, you know, you gotta be the star. And I get it. You know, I'm not gonna I can't I can't hate on anyone's level of appreciation of themselves. Anyway, so Lou Williams is a bucket getter. What I didn't know, I did not know that Lou Williams was a high school player. I did not know that, which gives me a um not a new level of respect for him, but I'm gonna say an ultimate brand new level of respect. Because I don't I've always, it always gets me how players can come into the league like for the most part undersized because he's six one and just get buckets. Because Monte Ellis was a high school player too. But to come out of the high school and just get buckets as like a smaller person always blows my mind. So this got me thinking. Oh, also, he was the 45th overall pick in the second round by the Sixers. 45th overall pick in the second round. And this draft included players like Chris Paul, Martin Gortat, and Darren Williams. There were some other players in there in that draft, but they kind of washed out a little bit. So I mean, I don't think that was that important. When I'm very, I'm really happy for Lou Williams having 50 points. Like I, I'm, I'm ecstatic, happy as a clam, as they would say. But it got me thinking: How come no one in your organization has scored 50 points in 27 years? No one scored 50. Like now, I don't, I don't have, I don't have the specific stats on this, but. I know, I know, I know within, tw- I know within 27, I know I'm positive within 27 years, I'm positive within 20 years, within 20 years, I can find someone from each team that has scored 50 points within 20 years. I'm positive of it since, cause that 20 years, let's say that's 19, that'd be 1997, right? I'm positive that since 1997, every team has had someone that has scored 50 points. I'm positive of it. You, you, I'm, mm-mm. you guys don't believe me. I'm positive. And I'll and I'll look it up. But as of right now, we're just gonna have to go with it. Because if you can ask me a player from a team that I would think has scored twenty points, 
I don't think I scored 50 points in the last 20 years from any team. I will tell you, I will t- what you don't ask me about the Warriors. That's that's simple. You ask me about the Mavs. Fine, Dirk. I'm sure Dirk has scored 50 sometime on the Mavs in the last 20 years. You want to think of another silly team? You want to give me the Milwaukee Bucks? Sure. At one point, I will guarantee you that Ray Allen have 50 points in the Bucks. I think I'll guarantee it. I'm pretty positive I will guarantee it. If he didn't have it, maybe Michael Red had it at one point. Do we keep going? Orlando Magic? Fine. Dwight Howard. Tracy McGrady. He used to play for the Magic. So the list goes on. Maybe the Gri- maybe the Grizzlies. Maybe the Grizzlies. Because maybe the Grizzlies, because but they have they, have they been in the league? The Grizzlies haven't been in the league 27 years, so that's not gonna work either. 27 years? Let me tell you guys something. I have right here the draft picks of I have right here the draft picks of the Clippers since 1990. And what I'm going to tell you, what I'm going to tell you is this. Usually, I'm, I'm just going to tell you this. There's a bunch of people on here, a bunch. There's a bunch. And the people that you guys know, like the people that you know over the last, I don't know, let's say 20 years, there's probably five people on here that, that you guys would know. And that's going to be Blake Griffin, Eric Gordon, DeAndre Jordan, and oh, Sean Livingston, Tyson Chandler. Darius Miles, Lamar Odom, Michael Olacandy. And the rest, yeah, the rest, no. No, you guys, no. So I don't really know necessarily if it, and the thing that gets me, it's not it's not it's not only the draft, right? It's the draft and then like as far as like you moving players around. You can't bring someone in that can give you fifty points. And I'm not saying that fifty points is the benchmark of like every good player, but I just mean that you know, even even the Suns, the Suns had a player. The guy, I think his name was um, I want because I'll never forget this. Suns had a guy named Tony Delk, and I was like, who is Tony Delk? He scored fifty points one time for the Suns. It, so there's all I want to say. Boogie Cousins scored fifty points for the Kings at one point. There's always fifty points being scored somewhere somehow. But in twenty seven years, you guys haven't found anyone. That's a shame. That's a shame. And and you guys need to reevaluate your efforts as a staff, record label, and the crew. Let me, this might be a little bit easier for you. I'm just going to, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you guys their last, their last like top five pick. Their last, actually their last first overall pick was Blake Griffin. Their last top five, top four pick was Sean Livingston in 2004. He's obviously a warrior now that Chris Wilcox back in 2002 and they, Danny Manning in 1988, Danny Ferry, if you take a look at this drafting of these players, I just, I don't know what they're doing. And again, the draft doesn't say it all, but they haven't made any moves to get anyone in that could score 50. It bothers me. It bothers me significantly. Congratulations to Lou Williams for a team to not have a 50 point score in 27, in 27 years. I think it's a problem. Congratulations on finally like making moves to get yourself a player that can score 50 points. Congratulations. I'm going to take a quick commercial break. When I get back, I'm going to celebrate Kevin Durant on his 20,000 points. I'm also going to give you guys this day in NBA history. I'm going to give you a game of the night, a pick of the night, and I'm going to wish you a happy weekend. Be right back. I'm also going to tell you why we need to take some time to just appreciate Kevin Durant. Just appreciate him. Appreciate him right now. Be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway, presented on your favorite podcast network, the GSMC Podcast Network, to fulfill all of your podcasting needs. How you guys doing? Everything well? All right. Awesome. This I'm going to. 
I'm going to go out on the limb right now. I'm going to go out on the limb and let you guys know that this show, if you've missed any of it, you should just start at the beginning because this show has been this. This has probably been this might be this might be the best show that I've ever done. And that's thanks to you. That's thanks to you guys listening. And I always appreciate that. So thank you from my heart to your heart. Ryan Holloway to the whole staff record label and crew my GSM Sears. So this is where we're at right now. I just got done talking about how congratulations to Lou Williams for scoring 50 points in one game. Okay. That, and he was the first player to do that on the Clippers in 27 years. The last one to do it was Charles Smith. They haven't had a 50 point scorer in 27 years. I think that is a direct reflection or a correlation or some causation or some type of relation that may have something to do with the way that organization is ran. Cause I think you should have one fifty point score in less than 27 years. I think it's silly. It's ridiculous. Now more talk about buckets. Kevin Wayne Durant scored his 20,000 the bucket the other day. Um, he is the, I guess one of the, he's one of the youngest, second youngest to do it behind LeBron. Now, when it comes to this youngest thing, this is why I just, just want to appreciate him scoring 20,000 points. I just want to appreciate it because it's a lot of buckets. It's a lot. It's a lot of buckets. There's only, only so many people have scored 20,000 points and, and for him to get to 20,000, it's a big deal. You're, I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, I'm not sure if anyone knows how much 20,000 is. It's a lot. It's a lot of points. I'm happy about him scoring that many points. He has been in the league for 11 seasons. He scored his 20,000th point the other night. He did it in 737 games. And right now, he's averaging 27.1 points per game. I'm sorry, over his career, he's averaged 27.1 points per game. So whenever Duran gets on the court, he's guaranteed to give you 27.1. Again, that's an average, but if you have to pick him, like I need, I'm going to need about 27 points. All right, I'm going to take Kevin Durant. That's his career average. So he's on pace to get some to get some buckets. I know what you guys want to hear. Fine. When they talk about he's the youngest, he's second youngest to do it. LeBron, these number, these numbers, <laughs> the way they break these things down, they're great because they give us something to talk about. However, I kind of think these are petty. Listen to these numbers, you guys. When you guys hear them, LeBron did it at 28 years old in 17 days. That's like a real number, right? Kevin Durant did it at 29 years old in 103 days. So he's 29. So he did it a year. He did it a year older than LeBron. I'm going to call the year older. Kobe Bryant did it at 29 years and 122 days. So Kevin Durant did it not 19 days earlier than Kobe Bryant. Like really? <laughs> I mean, that's he third sec, second youngest to do it because he was 19 days younger than Kobe. Come on, really? Come on. And then even with the Kobe one, you've got Will Chamberlain, 29 years old, 134 days. Michael Jordan, 29 years old, 326 days. So. Uh, Michael Jordan was 29 years old and 326. And I feel like I think I think the people who put together these numbers for this, I think it was the I think it was the the O heads. It was the Jordan fans because for Michael Jordan's to be 29 years old and 326 days is like so. If he was 326 days, isn't he just 29? Or well, wait, you know what? I'm sorry. This wasn't the LeBron. This wasn't the Michael Jordan heads that did this. This was, you know, I'm sorry. This was the Kobe stands. In the LeBron in the LeBron stands because instead of saying MJ was 29 years old, they want to add that 326 to make you know he was almost 30. Unbel the pettiness is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It is. Un I mean, so basically, LeBron's the LeBron is the youngest to do it at 28 years old, and all four and the other players to do it were 29. You got Kobe, Will Chamberlain, and Michael Jordan. For Kevin Durant to do it at 29 years old, it's it's a great company to be in, and I'm very, I'm I'm really happy for him. It's interesting to think about how how Kevin Durant, like how this whole situation could have worked out because Kevin Durant was the f second pick overall by the Seattle Supersonics. And when this all came together, I'm not sure if you guys know, but in the 2007 draft, right, there were two players that needed to go. There was Greg Oden. There was Kevin Durant. Greg Oden was going to go first period, regardless, even though he had like these knee problems, but he was, he was outstanding. He was an outstanding player. And it didn't quite work out for Greg Hoden, knee, prop, knee problems. He just didn't have what it took. You know, I'll, I, I'm not going to say he didn't have what it took. I'm going to say to be to preparation meets opportunity. So basically, when it comes to sports, when it comes to life, like as long as you prepare and your opportunity comes, like if you have an opportunity to have a great, great genetic form and great bones and great muscles, being an incredible shooter will let you play 11 seasons versus 
if you're if you play ball all your life and the opportunity doesn't come for your body, then it doesn't come. I don't like calling players fragile and things like that because these guys are beasts. They go super hard, and I'm not gonna ever call anyone fragile or say they're not built for it or say they're soft or anything like that because playing sports is hard and you get hurt. And some of our bodies aren't built for that type of for that type of uh, turbulence on a daily basis. So Greg Golden had to be picked before Kevin Durant. That was just it. He was a seven footer. He was the flame. He was a hot. He was supposed to be the hottest thing in the league. He went. Seattle Supersonics got Kevin Durant and the rest is history. It's interesting how that worked itself out because the Blazers, the Blazers took Greg Oden and the Seattle Supersonics took Kevin Durant and the Seattle Supersonics aren't a team anymore. Okay. See ya. So I wonder what, what happened in the inverse. Kevin Durant, would he still be on Portland? And well, Greg Oden would have went to the Supersonics and then he would have got like cut before the Supersonics even moved to OKC. Then OKC would just be, I mean, would, would OK, OKC would have like Russell Westbrook and that'd be it? Or would they even have got Russell Westbrook because their pick would have been different because they wouldn't have been as good? It's just, it just interesting how that worked itself out because a lot of times when it comes to a draft, there's a hard decision to make at the top of the draft. There's like that difficult one where you have to do this. Like you have to do one or the other. It's a, it's a, um, I'm not going to say it's a dilemma because a dilemma is a, a choice between two difficult options, but. Yeah, you have to choose one or the other. One of those drafts where either you're going to be right or you're going to be wrong. This draft was you had to take Greg Oden. Everyone said you had to take him, and that was it. And I congratulate Kevin Durant on um, just being awesome and making a great choice to go to an incredible team. I hope that they can keep this together because I believe that will end up happening if the money, if the greed, if the money, what's the word? If the greed kicks in. Not the greed, but just I don't even say greed, just individualism. For example, like I feel like Clay Thompson may take like a Kyrie Irving route. Like he just wants his own team, wants to go somewhere and just be a baller, right? Just go somewhere and just be like, hey, I, I, I want to get 30 because I, I, I can do my own thing. If people start wanting to make their own moves and this, this splits up, I don't see Kevin Durant reaching a trillion points as fast as he's supposed to. Uh, I like it's great right now where he's on the team where there's so many different threats. And they pass the ball so well that he can get buckets. I think it's awesome. So congratulations to him. As promised, I have this day in NBA history for you guys. I try to look up with some things that happened on the 12th, but the 12th, it just wasn't, the 12th wasn't outstanding. Not a lot of things happened on the 12th, but I did find some, I, saw, I moved to the 13th and the 13th was so outstanding that I found two things that happened on the 13th. So. Wilt Chamberlain of the Philadelphia 73 ugh, Wilt Chamberlain of the 76ers scored 73 points. Um 73 to lead Oh my god, I'm sorry. I read that completely wrong. This, this wasn't when he was on the Sixers. I'm sorry. So when Wilt Chamberlain was on the Warriors, he scored 73 points to beat the Chicago Packers. Yes, the Chicago Packers. That was a team. And basically, at the time, at the time that was the most score by any player. And now it's the third most, right? You guys know how that works? Because Will Chamberlain scored 73, then uh, maybe a year later, he scored 100 points. So he had the first and second record. You know who has a second record now? Kobe Bryant. So Kobe Bryant didn't, so for this might be, this may be a little bit of trivia for you guys. If anyone, if, if anyone asks you, if someone says, did Kobe Bryant pass Will Chamberlain in points scored? And someone tells you, no, you can say, yeah, actually, Kobe Bryant did pass him. He passed him in his in his number two record. It's interesting to know, right? I mean, that's good to know. Like he didn't pass his 100 point record, but Kobe passes Kobe passed his 73 point record. Good to know. Also. In January 13th, 1999, Michael Jordan announced his second retirement from the NBA just before the lockout. So it sounds like I mean, even though MJ took his last shot against the Jazz and it was it was a perfect moment. If any, if any of you guys have seen the highlight of that, of Michael Jordan taking his last shot, it's really good. It's, it's, it's awesome. You should watch it over and over again. It's great. It's great. He kind of, um, he kind of fouls the player guarding him a little bit, but it's, who cares? It's Michael Jordan. So <laughs> if you get a chance, I would check that highlight out. And it seems like MJ, it was right before the lockout. So it says just prior, I'm gonna say right before it seems like MJ, MJ might've heard whispers, right? So, and sometimes the universe talks to you. So MJ is like, should I play again? I don't know if I want to play again. And then you start hearing whispers of this lockout. I was like, wait, so you guys, aren't, you guys aren't even going to start the season on time? No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not playing. I'm not playing some whack season. No, no, I'm not going to do that. And the Knicks who had trouble with the Bulls back in the day for a while, they ended up going to the champ. They ended up taking, um, going to the Eastern Conference Finals to play the Spurs. 
and they lost the Spurs, and the Spurs got their first championship. And that's what I was talking about earlier about 82 games, right? And that's what I was telling you guys a little bit earlier about LeBron and 82 games and being tired and losing games to like teams that aren't as good or losing games to teams that are good doesn't really matter as much because once it shakes down at the end of the season, you have a, a massive sample to pick and choose what you want to learn from. I, Michael Jordan was like, I'm not going to play a 50 game season because that's not enough time for me to prep and get ready and, and play my hardest. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I need a larger sample. And he retired. That's what, that's, that's what it seems like. I mean, cause I feel like if the, if the season started on time, MJ might be like, all right, cool, let's run it. But to say, yeah, we may, we're going to start it like just later. Huh? What do you mean later? I don't know. Just, you know, maybe, maybe in December. No, no, no. I'm good. I'm not going to play anymore. You guys hang my jersey up. With that, I'm going to give you guys the game of the night along with the pick of the night. Tonight, the game of the night is going to be the Golden State Warriors against the Milwaukee Bucks. Why? Because Kevin Durant and Giannis and Kupo. That's why. That That's why. In case you need, I don't, I don't feel like I should have to give you another explanation other than that. That's why. That's why you're going to watch the game because of those two. The pick of the night is going to be Minnesota minus nine with New York coming to visit because Jimmy Butler is on the hunt for what looks like an MVP. Possibly, possibly, I, I don't know. Possibly, maybe we'll see with that. I appreciate you guys listening. Thank you for spending time with your truly Ryan Holloway on the GSMC basketball podcast presented by the GSMC podcast network to fulfill all of your podcasts and needs. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Live long, prosper, watch out for bottles. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program